Hello, welcome to SMT call. Today we are going to solve the day 17 of September lead code challenge. So today's problem name is robot bounded in circle. Okay, so let's try to understand the problem statement first. Then we will try to design one solution for the same. Okay, so what they are saying here, uh, they are saying that uh, here is that there should be one infinite plane and there should be one robot and in that robot would initially start uh, initially stand in the 0 0 position or root position, right? And its 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 direction should be in the upwards or north direction, right? And we can give robot three instruction. Okay, so these are the three instructions. G G means robot will go upwards. Upwards means whenever it will it will move it will change direction by one, right? And since in in the in the start or initially it will its it direction is the north side, then it will go to the north side only, right? Or upward direction only. Okay. And we can uh, give robot to direction uh, instruction named L. So L means it will rotate 90 degree to the left. That means so initially it will it was facing to upwards. Now if I rotate it by left, it will now its head will now look like this, right? And we also can give robot to R. R means it will rot rotate to the right side by 90 degree. Okay. So suppose I uh, do like this, right? Uh, L then G R and G R means it will rotate to so it should it, it should be initially in the R uh, initially here then it will rotate to here then it, it will move in this direction right so according to its head direction the robot will move for G right so initially it will it was it will face to upward direction but uh, whenever we are changing its direction or head direction if I change its head direction then it will move to direct this direction only right so if it is facing to the right side then it will move to the right if it is facing to the left side then it will move to the left but it will only move whenever we are passing this instruction g it will not move for l and r l and r will only change the direction of the head of the robot not the position position can only be changed using g only right so this is these are the given instructions so let's try to see the given example also quick okay so initially our robot will be here okay so let's let's try to understand the first example only okay so here our instruction set is gg ll and gg so that means g means initially it, it was facing to upwards i will move robot by one unit again again i see that again next instru instruction is also g it will go upwards once again now it's saying l right l means it will rotate to the left we are, robot position will not change but it will just change its direction to left okay now again we see again it is left so again we will do the 90 degree left rotation okay so let's do that now it's pointing to downwards now again our next two instruction is g means g again g okay so now i can see it's now come back to zero zero so we can return true in this case and there can be another scenario okay so if you check the second scenario right g and g so that means it will go upwards then again it will go upwards and we, this instruction will keep repeating, right? So we need to consider that. It's not like that we execute it once, that's done. Robot will keep performing or keep executing this instruction in infinite loop, okay? So, but in this case, if we, if we keep, if you keep repeating this instruction, still it will not come back to root because we are not rotating its direction or head, right? So it will go upwards, upwards and upwards. So in this case, you need to return false. And there is another example also GL, right? So in this case, you can see initially it will move upward by one then it will rotate to left okay by 90 degree but you can see that after the executing this instruction for the first time the robot is not in root position but robot will keep executing this right so again it will execute g so g means it will go one left side it will move to the left side by one unit then again it will execute l okay So it will look like this now again it will execute g it will come here again it will rotate like this now again if we keep executing it will come back to here only right so again in this case we need to return true so these are the all three problem uh, uh, these are these are the all three test case scenario we need to keep in mind while designing our solution okay so let's try to design solution or develop one solution for the same so how we can do so let's quickly try to design one solution for the same using java okay so what we can do so what is known to us that we know that robot can move into four direction but based on its based on its head direction okay so let's straight uh, try to declare those direction in a array first okay
Okay, so what are the direction? It can move, so it can go. So since if it is face, if it heads to is facing toward upward or north, then it should be zero one. That means we are incrementing the y value. X value will remain same. It can be like this also. It can go to the left side. If it is going to the left side, then we are going to decrement by x value by y, and y will remain same. It can go to the downwards also, right? So for downwards, x value will remain same. But x, y, we are going to decrement y, right? And if it is facing to the right direction, in that case, we are going to increment our x-axis value, and y will remain same. Okay? So this is this will be our direction. So based on its head position or head direction, we need to we need to pick the value of x and y axis, okay, for incrementing or decrementing whatever, okay. Apart from that, we need to keep tracking those uh, these cases, right, where it is not rotating, right. So I need to I, whenever I will iterate through this instruction, I will keep tracking this thing also that it is it rotating or not. If it is at the end of our execution or at the end of our performing all the instruction, if I see that it's not rotating at all, then we can return false. Okay, so for that I am going to take one variable called zero i i, and initially it will be zero, and we need two more variable x and y. So at the end we have, we will check this value right. If x and y both are zero, that means it's come back to root. Then we can return obviously true right. Okay, I think these are the four. Variable we need to declare. So now let's quickly write one for loop and let's try to iterate through this instruction. So we will pick one instruction at a time and we need to we will perform the we will keep check the keep checking the position of the robot after executing that particular instruction. Okay. So let's declare one for loop. So it should be let's declare one variable called s. It should be initially at zero and s will run till instruction is less than length. Okay. We need to run all the instruction. Okay. And we need to increment our s value after that. Now, what we need to check? I need to check that I need to check the is it is it a rotation? If it is a rotation, then we, then we need to update its head, right? So let's do that. So if instruction dot care at i, sorry care at s equals to equals to left. If it is left, now let's update its head direction. Okay, so we will update our i value. So initially it was towards upward zero means right zero means this value. Now, if I found that my instruction is l, then it should we should pick this value whenever we are going to move next. Okay, so let's do that. So it should be i plus one. Okay. Since we are incrementing i to to avoid array out of bound in uh, out of bound exception, because our array size is always four, right? We will we are going to take the we are going to take the remainder value of by four, right? Okay, and what else? We need to check the right side also, right? If it is the right comment or r comment, then we need to we need to keep we need to pick this value, right? So let's do that. So it should be. Instruction uh, care at s, and if it is r, then we are going to pick i equals to. It should be i equals to i plus three. Four means three means this value. So, if I if it is if it is heads towards right, then whenever I will I will found next g, it will move to the rightward direction, right? So that we will pick one zero. Okay. Now for g, uh, so there can be three three type of command, right? L r. The last one is G, so let's write logic for the G also, right? So for G, we are going to update our x and y variable. Okay, so x should be earlier x value plus the current value. So current value will be decided based on its head direction. So head direction is stored in this i variable, right? So let's write like this. I, I means I know that which direction to pick, or which value to pick, and for x we are going to consider the zero value. Similarly, we will do it for y also, right? Okay, so this should be for y now. I think that's pretty much. At the end, we need to check before returning that if my x equals to equals to zero and y both are zero, that means we can return true. And we need to. So there can be some scenario, right, where it will be like this G L, right, where we need to execute this loop again and again. But we will not going to execute infinite time because that will obviously not throw runtime exception, 
a time limit exception. So, if I see that if, if, if the input string contains at least one rotation, that means we will surely come back to root, right, at one point of time. Because suppose it's like this, right, GL. So, if I execute this GL instruction four times, then again we should come back to root. That's the property of rotation, right? So, it will rotate to this side, this side, this side. Again, it will come back to here at the end of the, after certain amount of uh, repetition, okay? So, I will check that if my rotation is greater than 0 or not equals to 0, whatever. So, initially I was 0, right? So, if I found that I is greater than or not equal to 0, that means we know that we have one rotation instruction in our input string. So, that means after certain repetition, we will surely come back to root. And if it is still 0, that means for these cases, right, GG. So, the, in this case, I will remain 0. That means there is no chance to come back to root. We can return false, okay? I think that's pretty much. Let's quickly run the code and see. Okay, it's throwing some compilation error. Let, let me quickly fix that. So, it should be length like this. Okay, I think it's giving us the expected answer. Let's quickly submit it also. Okay, I think our solution is accepted. So, let's try to analyze the time and space complexity again. So, it can you can see it's getting 100% Java submission. So, what are the time and space complexity here? So, yeah, we are using, we are, we are, using just only one for loop, there is no nested for loop, we are just iterating through the instruction only once, so obviously time complexity will be order of n, in linear time we can solve it. And if you if you say about the space complexity, here we can see that we are using extra four variable, but that not depends on my instruction length. So if my input instruction length is 5, then again we are going to use five four variable, if my input instruction size is 1000, then again we are going to use these four variables only, right? So is in for this scenario, we are solving it in constant space, okay? So, time will order up in, space complexity will be constant. I think that's pretty much for this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and if you have still some doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thanks, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.